Well, folks, you know those YouTube people who just don't release videos on a decent schedule? Turns out I'm one of them. Uh, <coughs> in case you can't tell, I've got a really bad virus. Apparently it's not COVID. Spent a week in Dallas for work. Unavoidable, didn't want to go. I hate traveling for work. Anyway, so the last time, I, last time we checked in, I think I was talking about um, the... <coughs> Super Select system relays, and uh, I think I might have said that I discovered there's like a zillion of these things on eBay, and they're like 25 bucks each. So apparently, it is the way these things fail. And the video I showed previously was me going, "Oh yeah, it's the fact that it's not pulling the it's not pulling the uh, valve open on the the uh, engagement rod actuator rod on the diff open enough, or it's not doing it consistently." Well, I stopped recording because there's a bloody street sweeper here. And rather than pass, they're fucking hanging around now because, of course, whenever I'm filming. Um, so while we're waiting for them, um, <clears throat> some of you may have noticed that I tend to breathe funny. Uh, like it's, I'm almost like I'm about to snore when I'm breathing. So <laughs> I know I sound pretty bad right now because I've got a cold. <clears throat> Just letting you know, for those of you who give a shit, um, I'm only 47, which, you know, yeah, okay. It's not young, but uh, I've got very severe obstructive sleep apnea, and like literally the second I stop concentrating on <clears throat> um, breathing, like as soon as I fall asleep or if I focus on something else, my palate just collapses and I start making <sighs> sort of weird breathing noises. So uh, yeah, get a sleep study done, uh, done, folks, if you snore loudly or you have funny breathing noises, because it fucking changed my life. I shit you not. Um, Assuming you can hear me, uh, I've taken off <clears throat> the intake tube. I've got to get down here to all the uh, valves and everything. I've disconnected it. They're a bit hard, harder to get to on this car because um, I've got this big gas carburetor thing here. Um, so yeah, I have to actually get more of the airbox off to get down there. Some funny stuff that someone's done on here. Um, they don't much like the Mitsubishi airbox clips and they've fucking screwed self-tapping screws into the airbox. I don't know why. I guess we'll find out um, very shortly. So while I'm just waiting for these uh, Street Trooper guys to piss off, let's see if I can do this one-handed. Whoa. Okay. Doesn't look very well self-tapped. Okay, that one's coming. You know, this is a lot harder than it looks doing the whole YouTube thing with one hand. I don't know how Eric from SMA does it. <clears throat> Easy to give these people shit when it's not you. Oh, you probably can't see in there at all, and I can't get in there with that. <clears throat> I need to use the screwdriver. I'll be back. I'll be back once it's done. Well, this is fun. Look, I've even screwed into the filter into the rubber gasket. Lord knows why. All right, now I've got to remove the actual uh, bottom of the airbox to, to get access to everything. These are just 10 mil bolts usually. By the way, if you didn't know on the video, this is your air, air intake, it's up to the wheel arch. And if you put a snorkel to the car, that's where you drill through the outside and run a snorkel up if you ever fit one. Right, now that the street trip is pissed off, um, it's about as much access as I've got. <clears throat> if you look at it, uh, you've got basically, <clears throat> this is your layout. <clears throat> you've got your hoses like so. Two coming in from the top. And what you notice is that they're capped differently. So what that basically means is that um, uh, they're both identical, but when one turns on, it's like default open and de another one's default closed, right? So <clears throat> when you power it, power one up, it opens the valve. When you power that one up, it's closing a valve. So it's just about the defaults. Um, I don't know if these are 12 or five volt triggered. <clears throat> um, I'll probably back probe that for you guys so you can see it. I'm sure, I mean, look, I've done half the work on explaining how this whole thing works in detail. I might as well do the rest. So um, this is gonna be a two hand job to get this out fiddly and getting the clips off and everything and the vacuum hoses. So I'll be back once I've got more access or I've set up the camera on a tripod. Well, <coughs> again, excuse the coughing and the snorting. Looks like you can see what I'm doing. I'm down here. Uh, so the first thing is to get the 
get the clips off. So there is like a little um, couple of cable guides. Get, get this guy off. This is like a test port or something that actually goes down into the <coughs> into this assembly down here. I'll get my torch. Oh, that fucking three sweepers back again. Oh great, my torch is flat. <laughs> This guy's going brown around my street over and over and piss me off. God damn YouTube wankers. Yeah, see it's I can't fix the strobing, sorry, but yeah, there's a <coughs> test port. I'm not sure what you would use the test port for. Uh, you can get that nipple off. It doesn't look like it would seal very well. So maybe it's just a vent. <clears throat> as opposed to a test port. I don't know. Curious about that. Anyway, get that guy out of the way. Now we've got to get these off and it looks like there's like a little, you push in in here and that's what gets them out. going to be super annoying having to push that <clears throat> with one screwdriver and prise it with another. I'm sure some of you are going, that's not the way you do it, dickhead. Okay, well, that's the first time I've done it, so as long as I don't break the plugs, I'll be right. This hard line here <clears throat> for the brakes is really in my way. And I can't get these wires out any further, unfortunately. I kind of need to get this up and over this fucking... Yeah, that's more like it. No, no real lever point. Oh yeah, you've got to use your... F oh look, crusties. Not sure if you can see that. I'm going to focus on it. <coughs> Crusties. I'll have to clean that. <coughs> so what I'm going to do... Let me hit that with my contact cleaner. <coughs> Tell me if you know it. Is there a difference between contact and circuit board cleaner and brake cleaner? Smells the same to me. No, oh, that's got no gas in it at all. I need some towels or something, and I don't know where they are. Oh, here they are. By the way, while we're here, let's have the dielectric grease discussion. If you Google dielectric, it means it doesn't pass current. But what that actually means is <coughs> dielectric grease, when you put it on a connector, um, when the connector's touch, it does push the grease out of the way completely, but around the contact patch, it blocks oxygen. So you can't get oxidization. So dielectric grease, is very handy for protecting a joint. It doesn't make the joint. That's more like, uh, what's the other stuff? Like deoxid. Deoxid cleans the joint. Um, and deoxid's a lot harder to find in Australia. It's certainly not sold under the deoxid brand. Anyway, video evidence. So for this one here, the wire colors are 
gosh. <laughs> they look the same. Uh, what? They must be ground switched then. What would you call that, white? What would you call that one? That one is yellow green. So this one here is, let me zoom in. See if I can get that one on the zoom even better. Yeah, this one here is <coughs> yellow green. And this one, well, let's get him out first. Now that we know which one's which. That one's also a bit crusty. I don't know if that's actually striped. I'm gonna focus on that for you. My eyes are a bit shit. <coughs> I'm gonna get the to watch again. Again, this will strobe for you guys, but let's have a look. Oh, interesting. That's got two wires going into it. That one's got one. Bit of green and crusty on the back of that one still. Ah, oh, okay. Why are they run in series? Okay, this is very confusing and now I need to go and do more investigation as to what that all means. Okay, I'm on microphone on the desk and I hope I don't cough and sputter into the bloody microphone, but I've worked at how this uh, running in parallel thing works and it's because the Super Select system, aka Active Track, if you're an American, works it's as an electromechanical system. That being, there's the electro side, which is solenoid, which are either both turned on or off. But there's also the mechanical side, which is if they're turned off, then the, the direction of the solenoid, all it's doing is directing the default flow of vacuum. So the way it works is the vacuum is either forced to engage four-wheel drive or the vacuum path is forced to disengage four-wheel drive. And that's by looking at, <clears throat> this is the, on the diff. So if you were sitting in the driver's seat looking over the bonnet, this is the direction that the uh, that system would be facing. And so if you remember the previous videos, you saw this little cover, I had it pulled back um, and I was dicking around with these vacuum tubes. So what it's saying is, if you don't apply any power to the solenoids, <clears throat> then the vacuum path will will always be active, and it'll just be pulling this pulling this uh, uh, diaphragm in here one way or the other. And so the default is with the foot with the power turned off, I believe, that it pulls it this way and engages four wheel drive. But I can't actually tell. Um, from this diagram, uh, <clears throat> which one's which. So if we look at the ignition switch here, it's saying that there's a 10 amp fuse and there's a yellow blue, I think L is blue. And if we looked at those wires we saw before, I'm pretty sure it was yellow blue. So C112 <clears throat> is a large connector. Um, it's not on this one, it's down here, C112. Yeah, see it's quite large in the bottom right of the screen. <clears throat> Yeah, four wheel drive indicator control unit. <clears throat> so what do we got? Uh, there's detection switch, detection switch, detection switch, detection switch, and all these um, plug into things like the switches in the transfer case. But they also um, engage the system. So it says here, so somewhere in here, it's activating the power to this, and I'm assuming it's ground switched because I'm looking at this diagram. Let me just go to the next page. This just says ignition switch. Um, these are the indicator lights, but anyway, um, yeah, so you turn the ignition switch on and it provides 12 volts. <clears throat> so it is a 12 volt system, 12 volts all the way down into the solenoids and the solenoids power up. 
And so when they're powered up, <clears throat> one of them, they both open, but because of the routing of the vacuum, um, one of them, I suppose, is uh, not providing any vacuum to the diaphragm and the other one is providing vacuum to the diaphragm due to the routing. And I'm sure if I actually, <clears throat> this virus goes away and I wrap my head around it, I'll do like a nice more detailed description of the overall behavior of the Pajero Super Select Active Track Selection System so you can just, you know, get a real feel for it as opposed to this um, flu-addled brain trying to tell you what's going on. So yeah, so you apply power to it, they both power up, but the routing of the tubes, um, and I'll overlay the image here, the routing of the tubes uh, dictates exactly whether it's applying vacuum or not. All right, so when one is powered, so, so when they're both powered up, uh, one of them is applying um, vacuum to one side of the diaphragm, and when they're both powered off, the route changes of the diaphragm is pulled in a different direction. In other words, it's just, um, it's always pulling that, that vacuum in one direction or the other. So it's not like you have two different solenoids and one solenoid's powered on and one's off and then you flip it so that one sol the other solenoid's on and the other and then the, the first one's off. It's just that they're both on or both off and it's just the fact that they are <clears throat> what, three port solenoids. I'm sure if they had a, a solenoid they could have used at the time that had more ports in it, um, they might have just used that. They might have just used one solenoid, but it's just the fact that the solenoids they used dictate they have to have two. Um, but I just can't tell here, um, looking at this diagram, and it could just be because I got the flu, uh, that when you engage four-wheel drive, right? It's not detection, it's engage. So when you, when you put the transfer case into four-wheel drive, <clears throat> there's a switch in the transfer case that detects that and then tells the control unit, which is this box here, and we can scroll down to the other side so we can see it says four-wheel drive indicator control unit. It tells that to apply uh, uh, power or not to those solenoids. So once I work that out, I'll draw a better diagram, but that's fundamentally it. And I'm not sure why uh, the diodes there. That diode might mean I've got the whole thing wrong. Righto folks, I've just done some diagnosis of the old solenoid pack from the NL Pajero. Uh, so I've got a new set in there, everything seems to be working fine. And we've described the functionality of uh, this solenoid array uh, in that the way it works is, I just need to uh, the light here is a bit sort of washed out because I'm the lights turned on But basically the way it works is both of these solenoids are uh, Powered at the same time. So if there's power going to the solenoid control circuit, they're both on the difference is that when they're both on right uh, They're plumbed differently. So you'll see that this one has a cap on this end of it. Whereas this one actually feeds uh takes vacuum from the car. So this, this side here is the vacuum source, so from the inlet manifold and the vacuum tank that will actually pull vacuum. So this one is um, vacuuming and, and pulling from this hose, right? So it applies vacuum to this hose. And this one also applies vacuum to this hose, but uh, when it is off. So <clears throat> I'll actually show you that now. So what I've got here, it's a, uh, don't worry about the numbers, the numbers aren't important, this is just a, a carburetor balance gauge system that I happen to have lying around that measures vacuum. Um, and so basically I've got a vacuum pump over here. Now when I, there's no power applied to the circuit right now, but you'll note that there's positive and positive are the same, negative and negative are the same. Okay, so both of these solenoids are powered off right now. And what you'll notice is when they're off, this one's uh, pulling vacuum, right? So this one here goes to that gauge and see it's actually uh, Draining back quite quickly. It's got a leak There you go <clears throat> So what I'll now need to do is I'll have to oh, I'll do that again with no clamps just so you know that this clamp must have nothing to do with that leak or lack of leak See there's a leak down. So even if I clamp off all vacuum from the other solenoid, this one here, there's still a leak down. So now, what I'll do 
is I'll take my power probe, apologies here, and I will apply power. You hear them clicking? So make sure I can do that. Now see there's a leak on that one as well, but it's the other solenoid now. So when I applied power, this solenoid activated, but it effectively blocked off that channel. Whereas applying power on this solenoid, it opened the channel, right? So now this one's applying vacuum. So when there's no power, this one's applying vacuum. And this will be the one which pulls the uh, engagement rod into the front diff because by default it's four wheel drive. But when you start the car, if the car's in two wheel drive mode, the two wheel drive lever setting will cause it to apply uh, power to the relay and then <coughs> to the to the solenoid, sorry. And then this one will open up and that one will block off. So what will happen is if it's in two wheel drive, it will uh, uh, release the vacuum from this one, right? And it'll pull vacuum from this one so that it's actually now pulling the engagement rod out of the front diff, putting the front diff into two wheel drive mode. <coughs> All right. And of course, what happens is there's a, there's a detection switch in that front diff, which detects the position of that pin. And if the pin isn't uh, fully in or out, uh, if it's not fully in, I think, yeah, if it's not fully in, it'll assume that the diff is still engaged in four-wheel drive, so we get the flashing four-wheel drive lights. Now, what's interesting is, uh, if I do this again, I'll apply power, and you'll see, that it's leaking down. Now, if I now block off um, the vacuum uh, to this left-hand solenoid and then apply power so that it's the right-hand solenoid being activated, see how it's got no leak down? It's holding. So what that means to me <coughs> is that the core issue with my... Uh, four-wheel drive engagement or two-wheel drive engagement system, more to the point, was that there's a leak in this solenoid. Uh, <coughs> I've pulled the caps off. Um, I have uh, haven't checked the hose directly. It could be the hose. It's most likely the solenoid that it's just gummed up in here. Um, so what I'll try and do next is I'll blow that out with some um, WD-40 or something and see if the leak down goes away. By the way, in case you're wondering, the reason there is a <coughs> four-way joint here. So basically, uh, one of these hoses goes to the plenum and <coughs> it pulls vacuum, but it's also got a one-way check valve in it so that it can pull vacuum, but it can't actually go back to atmosphere. <coughs> and this one goes to the vacuum tank. So when the plenum is pulling vacuum, um, from the air intake of the car, it's actually pulling vacuum from all these hoses and it's pulling a vacuum into the tank. And because this is a one-way valve, even if there's no vacuum, say you're driving along um, at, say, uh, um, like full throttle where there's actually no vacuum in the, in the intake plenum, then basically the vacuum tank that's under the car mounted just behind the diff will provide vacuum if you needed to... Um, uh, use the vacuum um, to drive that front engagement rod if there was no vacuum currently available. Rare on a car that's not turbocharged, but um, yeah, that's why it does that. Anyway, I've <coughs> given this a bit of a hit um, of uh, penetrant, let it soak for a bit, uh, and then activated the solenoid a few times. So now let's see. Now it's still got a huge leak down. See that's just immediate leak down. Let's um, clamp off this one again and apply power. Yeah. So there you go. So fundamentally, <clears throat> the issue with this this uh, solenoid pack is that there's an internal leak. Um, let's just pull that off. Get rid of the. Yeah. So, so it's a bit sort of washed out in here, isn't it? Um, if I can get anything better that's not so... It is a bit sort of washed out. There we go. So this one here on the left has a leak in it. Um, let's pull the hose off. 
and have a look at that. Um, I don't see, I don't see any issues with that hose, but I will just try and lever it off. Oh, it's coming. I don't want to knock the camera over. Let's pull the other one off as well. Oh, Jesus. Like, they're definitely stuck on. They're not, they're not like, uh, slipping off. Like I say, it's been there 22 years. If I actually hold my thumb on that and suck on it. <coughs> tastes like WD-40. <coughs> Maybe not do that. Yeah, sorry, I don't know if you saw me do that, but there's, I just sucked on it and there's no leak in the hose. So the leak is definitely inside this. <clears throat> and again, these are 20 bucks. Like literally, you can get this for 20, $29 delivered in Australia. That's Australian dollars too, right? So like five American dollars. <laughs> I kid. Uh, yeah, so cheap. Literally, I would say if you're having issues with your system for the price of the parts cannon of this, just buy one, chuck it in, see if it fixes it. Um, worry about getting under the car later. Okay, I'm just back on the uh, wiring diagram here, and after checking the power supply to the solenoids when the ignition is on, I have confirmed it is a ground switched circuit. So basically, I think this diagram here is a bit backwards where it says free wheel engage switch and two wheel drive, four wheel drive detection switch. I actually think. This is actually the engagement switch here in the transfer case. So when you put the transfer case lever into four wheel drive, I believe that's making the connection here and that drives the uh, solenoids and the detection of the four wheel drive, two wheel drive mode is here in the free wheel engage switch and also on the other side in the four wheel drive operation detection switch. So that one says detection switch and this one here says two wheel drive, four wheel drive detection switch. But I believe uh, this is what grounds out the power to the solenoids, but this separate one is what detects, uh, is separately the lever position detection. So this is what controls whether the, uh, uh, where is it here? So yeah, to the free wheel engage switch, if you put it into four wheel drive, it'll power the solenoids. It'll also detect via this one here, sorry, this one here that you've put it in four wheel drive and then the lights will flash until this switch here closes. And then once you've got this switch here to cl uh, 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 closed and this switch here closed, then the light stop flashing. Okay, so I think I've just confirmed this because if you look at that previous, if you scroll back in the video, uh, B06, <clears throat> which is the uh, detection switch, uh, is actually in the transfer case. So B06 is called the two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive detection switch. Um, it's, poor, it's poor terminology. What it means is when that switch is closed, you're actually grounding out the power to the solenoids. So it's quite mechanical in that regardless of the uh, control box, which does the light flashing and everything, when you put the car into four-wheel drive, then it controls the power going through uh, those solenoids effectively mechanically. And as long as the solenoids have no electrical uh, solenoid resistance issues, then the, the actuator rod will be driven into or out of the front diff. And by the movement of the lever in the transfer case, you'll be mechanically engaging the front drive shaft. So even if the control box that shows the flashing lights on the dash completely failed, if the switches are mechanically working, then the actual four-wheel drive system will continue to operate. And I actually find that quite um, uh, interesting and robust. Okay, so you can see <coughs> I'm on the ground side of that second uh, first relay. 
let's look at the voltage here, 11.6. I believe it's in four wheel drive mode. Let's put that down into two wheel drive. And now it's turned it off. Okay, now I'm going to uh, put it into four wheel drive and two wheel drive and just listen to see if you can hear clicks coming from these relays. I could hear those from the cabin, so yeah. So as I wiggle it back and forth from four wheel drive into two wheel drive, you can see it's applying power to those relays on those solenoids. I don't know why I keep calling them relays. Bad habits. But there, there you go. That's empirical evidence of the way it works and a pretty clear <coughs> guidance that if anything happens for 25 bucks, or whatever, 25 bucks or whatever it is, throw the parts cannon at it, it's probably got leaks. You might just solve the issue in one hit. And even if you don't, you kind of know where the rest, you know, has to, you, you, even if it doesn't fix it, you know where to go next to look at it. You go down to the vacuum canister and investigate. You can check the vacuum to see if there are vacuum leaks. You can look at the rod actuation to see if it's sticking. You can actually go and look down at the mechanicals after that. But this is a good place to start.